Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I'm gonna try to not keep you late after class, okay? Yesterday I went almost 16 minutes and I've pretty much given up on trying to get my snippets down to 12 minutes, okay? But I am trying to cut off and be finished by 15 minutes each day. So let me start here first today. There's a beautiful little girl on YouTube that sent me a message and I want to just give a shout out to uh, sweet Maddie. Her name is Maddie. Uh, she said, Miss Faye, I want you to know you are so special and I love you, exclamation point. I'm Maddie and I'm nine years old. Well, Maddie, thank you. That made my day because you know what? Even this Bible teacher needs somebody to love on her every once in a while. So I'm glad you're listening to me and I hope that I'm teaching you things that you can learn and you can know that you can trust God because he's a good God. Jesus is good and his father is good. And I love you, baby. Okay, so now the next thing I want to talk about, you know, um, I, 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 I like for people... Now, I, you know, it depends on a person's heart. Some people will hear me say this and think, oh, she's just bragging about how she stuck. No, I'm not. I'm not bragging about anything. I mean, if anything, I'm going to give God the credit for putting this fire inside of me of wanting to research and know and dig and learn truth so I can share it with other people. So please don't hear me bragging about how much I study. I have a passion for Jesus, my Father, and the truth, okay? But I do want to let people know how much I study a certain, any subject before I teach it because they know that I've done my homework. Now look, the Bible tells us to be Bereans and test things that we are told and taught, okay? It also says that we should study, we study to show ourselves approved by God. And that's all I try to do is that I will do the right thing by studying things fully and deeply. Okay, so with that all said, I want to show you some of the books that I have, okay, that I read, and all of these, there's 16 of them total, but these are the ones that I have in hard copy. I have some stuff on Kindle as well, uh, but you see all of these books. This is how much I studied uh, Jesus being a vegetarian and that he did not eat meat, he didn't eat fish. He didn't eat lamb, okay? Now, so let me, I just wanted to show you that I don't head into any subject just blowing in the wind type of thing where I heard somebody say something and I like that, so I'm just going to say that too. And I'm absolutely not one to parrot what the pastor in a pulpit preached. I am not going to do that because they're repeating what they were taught without really studying deeply many, many times, okay? So I hope that you, and, and the whole reason I'm telling you this is I want you to have confidence in the fact that uh, you can trust me to study a subject, and if you have a question, I can share those resources with you as well, okay? I can back up what I teach is what I'm saying. So let me start here today, and I want to read to you uh, Matthew 2.23. Let me pull that up real quick. Okay, Matthew 2.23. And having come, he dwelled in a city being called Nazareth, so that the thing having been spoken through the prophets would be fulfilled, because Jesus would be called a Nazarene. Now, why would I read you that? Well, this is where I'm going to start my teaching today. I want you to get an understanding of what it means to be a Nazarene. Uh, in, in the ancient days, there were a, a, a group of, uh, well, let me find my notes. Give me just one second. I'm flipping from the internet over to my notes now. Uh, there were different sects. I said this in another video, I believe, sects, sections, okay? S-E-C-T-S -E is short for sections or specific groups of people, Okay. So these different sections and groups of Israelites, Jews, were non-meat eaters, non-violent vegetarians, okay? And I know that's a shock for some, but I've been to Qumran. Uh, I've been to Israel twice. I'm going back in March, okay? And I've been to where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is where the sect, a very large group of people, lived who were vegetarians who did not eat meat, okay? John the Baptist lived with them, and he was uh, a vegetarian. 
He did not eat grasshoppers. He ate from the locust tree, okay? And there's a thing called St. John's bread, which was made from the fruit of that locust tree, okay? So we know the Essenes were all vegetarians. They were Israelites, and they did believe in the God of the Bible, okay? Now, the Essenes also, uh, there's uh, beyond that, the Nazarenes, People living in Nazareth were vegetarians. Look, guys, there's tons and tons of historical data that prove this. Jesus was a Nazarene. He was from Nazareth, and that's where this group, a sect of Jews, lived who did not eat meat. Okay, And then we have the Ebionites, who were non-meat-eating, non-violent Jews as well. Okay? Now... The reason I wanted to tell you about Matthew 2, 23, sometimes we are so far removed from that ancient period of time, we don't understand uh, the fullness of when, uh, you know, somebody says Jesus would be called a Nazarene. Okay. Now, uh, let me see. I want to read this to you. Uh, the Nazarenes, the Essenes, and the Ebionites, they did not practice the sacrificing of animals nor did they kill an animal, a lamb, to eat during their Passover celebrations. Did you get that? Okay, let me say it one more time. The Essenes, the Ebionites, and the Nazarenes did not slaughter and kill lambs for Passover. Okay, this is why none of the four Gospels mention a lamb at the Lord's Supper meal. Okay? Neither does Paul mention this in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 27. All you see is the bread, and I'm sure they had spices and different things that they mixed and put on the bread, okay? Different herbs and vegetables and things they could eat. But Paul doesn't mention it, and I'm going to give you the different addresses. Matthew 26, 26, Mark 14, 12, Luke 22, 14, John 13, 21, and of course, Paul, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. None of those five accounts mention anything about meat. And the reason for that is the Lord's Supper, which is sometimes called the Last Supper, and I would challenge that. That's, and I sometimes say that, but I don't mean it, and I try to catch myself and say the Lord's Supper, because, you know, that wasn't Jesus' last meal, right? But it was the last meal before he was tortured and hung on a cross. Okay, but uh, anyway, none of these five in even any of our Bibles in any writings mention anything about a lamb. Now, I find that interesting why Jesus wouldn't have picked up a piece of lamb and say, here, eat, this is my flesh. This is me that I'm going to give for you on the cross. He never said anything about the lamb at any of those meals. And the reason for that is because Jesus was a non-meat eater. Okay, now, I'm going to read one of the accounts today of the Last Supper because I think it's important that I point this out to you today. But again, uh, you go ahead and you read all of these five different accounts, okay, and, and look for a reference to there being meat on that table. But before I read uh, this uh, in Luke, first I want to tell you have you ever seen, and I know most of you have, seen the picture of the Last Supper where it's a long table and that's not what it was. I did a great teaching on what the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper would have actually looked like uh, a couple of three years ago, uh, but it wouldn't have been a long table. It would have been a, a square sitting on the floor. But anyway, Leonardo da Vinci painted a... Homes all over the world have this picture of the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper. Did you know that Leonardo da Vinci was a vegetarian and you will not see any meat on the table of any of, of the renderings of his painting of Jesus and the disciples having that last meal before Jesus went to the cross? Think about that. And I want to give you a quote from Leonardo da Vinci. And he was considered a genius. His IQ was so high. Okay. The day will come when men such as I will look upon the murder of animals as they now look upon the murder of men. Okay, so Leonardo da Vinci uh, 
was a vegetarian, and he felt like the murdering of animals was just as wrong as killing a man. It's still taking a living being's life and spilling its blood. Okay. Now, guys, I could go off into all of the Apocrypha and talk to you for hours about all the warnings in all of those books that's not in our American Bibles that warn about eating the flesh of animals. We just don't understand because we don't have the information that used to be available to the early Christians in the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th centuries, okay? Now, let me go over, and uh, I'm going to read this pretty quickly because I do want us to move through this. I'm trying to get this done as quickly as possible, but also teach to a depth level that I have proven what uh, I'm trying to get people to understand and know. I'm going to read Luke 22, uh, verses 7 through 20, and I may just go on and do a part two to this tomorrow because there's so much I want you to understand about this verse. So here we go. Verse 7, and on the day of sacrifice of the Passover lambs was to take place, Jesus sent for Peter and John and instructed them, go and prepare the Passover supper so we can eat it together. And they asked, where do we make the preparations for this meal? Jesus gave them this sign. When you enter the city, you will find a man carrying a jug of water. Follow him home and say to the owner of the house, the teacher has told us to ask you, where is the room I may use to have the Passover meal with my disciples. He will then take you to a large, fully furnished upstairs room making preparations for us there. And they went and found everything to be exactly as Jesus had prophesied, and they prepared the Passover meal. Okay, now, first of all, I want to make sure you understand the Passover meal that the Essenes, the Nazarenes, and the Ebionites had was the day before the Jewish Jerusalem Israelites, the Jerusalem Jews, they were a different sect. They practiced animal sacrifice. And they actually killed Jesus the day after the Passover meal that he had, which was the day before, okay? The Ebionites, Nazarenes, and Essenes uh, celebrated the Passover meal without any lamb, no meat, the day before the Passover meal was celebrated and the lambs were killed in Jerusalem, okay? So you got two different Passovers celebrated on two different days by different sections of of Jews. Got it? Now, I want to read to you the footnotes here in the Passion Translation, okay? Luke 22, 10. Carrying water was a task given to women. It would have been easy to spot a man carrying the jug of water. Next note. Jerusalem would have been filled with pilgrims coming to celebrate the feast. Every house would be filled with additional guests, so finding a room for Jesus and the Twelve would be no easy task. It is possible that this man carrying a jug of water, normally a woman's task, would be an Essene. They were the only Jewish men who culturally carried water in this way since they were celibate. They didn't marry. They abstained from uh, being married. They were, if you want to call it that, they were kind of like the priesthood, right? Okay. They had a community of Essenes in Jerusalem and they had a gate called the Essene Gate. They also had a different calendar than the typical Jewish calendar, which meant they would still have rooms available. Okay, so I'm going to call it a uh, stop for today. I'm, I'm not going to go any further because I do want to make sure I stay under my 15-minute uh, time frame. But here's what I want you to understand, okay? We sometimes are taught to read into Scripture and we don't understand the fullness of what's actually going on. Jesus, his meal, and none of the five accounts, the Gospels or Paul, said anything about Jesus eating lamb. Okay, If you're believing that Jesus ate lamb, it's because you're reading into Scripture what you have already been taught. Okay? I'm going to sign off here. I love you, and I will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.